Hydrofracking New York, from one New Yorker to another, by Mike Varley. Miscellaneous Concerns In earlier sections, I've discussed some of the other major concerns and supposed benefits of hydrofracking in New York, but there are a host of other less publicized but equally valid worries, ranging all the way from anecdotal accounts to codified law. We'll start with compulsory integration. Passed unanimously through our state legislature in 2005 and signed into law August of the same year, compulsory integration allows gas companies to mine a section of land once 60% of it is leased to them, regardless of what the other 40% decides. Trespassing rules still apply, but your mineral rights are conceded to the company in return for default minimum royalties. The drilling unit boundaries are determined by the gas companies all but guaranteeing gerrymandering of boundary lines. Noise pollution is another concern in an area prized for its silence. Aside from the considerable noise created by thousands and thousands of truck drive-bys, there is also the constant humming of water compression stations, placed every few miles to service surrounding pads. The noise from these stations expands out in a two-mile radius, with the epicenter reaching a constant noise exceeding 70 decibels. To give some perspective, New Yorkers, that's the same level as Grand Central Station on a mid-afternoon. Then, of course, there's this. Whoa! That's a water supply corrupted with methane gas. While not all cases can be directly linked to gas drilling, some can. In Dimmick, Pennsylvania, 20 families won a lawsuit against the Colbert Gas Company for methane contamination of their water. You may have seen this little guy before. He's Terry the Fracasaurus, one of a string of PR disasters for the gas companies. Talisman Energy released a coloring book for children to educate them on the environmental safety of hydrofracking. This is their depiction of the environment after a fracking pad is installed. Here we have an actual fracking pad. Perhaps more disturbing are recent revelations at a Houston oil and gas conference where PR executives Matt Pizzarella of Range Resources and Matt Carmichael of Anadarko admitted to using both PSYOPs tactics and ex-PSYOPs officers in order to counter community organizing. Download the uh, U.S. Army slash Marine Corps counterinsurgency manual. Because we are dealing with an insurgency. Uh, there, there's a lot of good lessons in there. And uh, coming from a military background, I've, I've found the insight in that extremely remarkable. Turning back to the environment, many folks are expressing their concerns about gas being lauded as clean energy. While it does burn cleaner than any fossil fuel, recent studies released by Cornell University suggest that for its entire life cycle, natural gas may have a greater impact on global climate change than even coal power. For instance, the untrapped methane gas released during the fracking process has 105 times the greenhouse warming impact of CO2. Finally, we have the earthquakes. While no studies have yet been done to directly link fracking and earthquakes, the statistics speak loudly. Up through 2009, Oklahoma averaged about 50 earthquakes a year. Recently, hydrofracking was introduced to the state with 181 active wells in Lincoln County. 2010's earthquake total? 1,047, with a recent November quake of 5.6 in Lincoln County's town of Sparks. Arkansas recently shut down two fracking wells after experiencing nearly 1,000 quakes in the given region over a span of six months, including a 4.7 quake in February, the state's largest in 35 years. Incidents have declined since the closure. In what may be a sign of things to come, England's Codrilla Resources admitted it's, quote, highly probable that their fracking operations caused a series of tremors in Lancashire, England. Its response? It's working on an early detection system.